last week. I hope that your weekend was pretty good for you and I hope today serves you. So we just about to jump right into it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your revelation. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your protection. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your strategy and your planning in the season. Heavenly Father, I ask that you just encompass the space. Holy Spirit, take control, have your way, speak to us, reveal to us, make plain. Jesus name. Amen. And y'all need to be paying attention. So, you know what I'm saying? Next time, I think I'm going to have a little spot for my star pupil. And that's you. If you get distracted by your phone, I'm going to need that. <laughs> I'm going to need that. I'm all going to sit up here next to the teacher. Okay. The next time you interrupt or the next time you let yourself be interrupted, I'm going to have you teach the class. Okay. All right. Cool. So the scripture that we were supposed to be focusing on, kind of studying with, sitting with was Acts 7. Right, And I told y'all we're going to be looking at the who's, the what's, the when's, and the Lord was going to tell us the why's because, <laughs> let me, okay, so let me just say, when he was giving out this layout, right, for coincidences, the course, maybe, <laughs> he pointed out this one, and you know, I'm nosy, so I had to go and check it out a little bit, he pointed out this one, and I said, um, yeah, how you going to make this work, how you going to swing that, so, but he did his thing, though, so I'm happy, so at seven, what we focusing on today. Okay. Can y'all see that? Nah. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Oh. <laughs> All right, look like we might be out. Of, might not be using the board today either. I'm, I gotta remember to bring some markers. Can you see that blue and that back and working? Okay. So we looked at Acts 7. And so we're answering some of the questions. Like I said, we're answering the who's, the what's, the when, the where, you know, all them little questions. Who, what, when, where, why, how. Okay. I want to know what some of y'all got, though. Let me know in the comment section. You know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and put it down there. Okay. So the who's. We're looking at the main characters of the text. And some of the ones that I got, we got Stefan. The high priest, Holy Spirit, Jesus, the official witnesses, saw Jews from the synagogue of free slaves, the crowds, lying witnesses, and the high council. So those are some of the who's. Yeah, let me step over because I think I'm going to go ahead. And... All right, let's try that again. <laughs> okay, so these are some of the who's that I said I found. I'm going to just go ahead and put it in there. Right? Okay, the who's. Stephen, high priest, Holy Spirit. Etc. Etc. I'm gonna make sure I put them up there, right? And so then we had to answer the question of what it is, what it was that we were looking at, and we were looking at Stephen responding to the accusations being brought against him. So, uh, you know, Stephen was accused. He was accused. And we're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. Okay. So when, about 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 the time that this happened, when did this happen in the storyline, and how does it, you know, pertain to the situation? So. This was after Stephen was chosen as one of the seven picked to administer food. This was after many signs and miracles were performed. This is after Jewish priests were converted, right? So we have a bunch of these scenarios that were starting to cause problems, right? So, oh, let me, let me just put this disclaimer out there. So to answer some of these questions, right? I suggest, I advise you at least reading one chapter ahead and one chapter after, right? And I, I, did, I know I didn't say that last week, and I probably should have. Um, but in order for us to really get context here and focus and get what it is that he's trying to point out with us, I recommend reading the chapter before and reading the chapter after. And this is, this is how I also answer some of these questions. It helped me to answer some of these questions, okay? But this is after. After Stefan was picked as one of the seven, right? So they were in the middle of a food crisis, right? Or it's not really necessarily a food crisis. There was just discrepancies going on about how the food was being administered, he was picked, okay? And this is after he performed many signs and miracles, okay? And this is also after Jewish priests were converted to the way, which the way was, you know, following after Jesus Christ. So 
Where did this happen? Okay, so this took place in front of a crowd. It took place in front of the uh, high council. It took place in Jerusalem. It took place in front of the witnesses, in front of Jesus and in front of the Holy Spirit, right? They were there. They were present in his vision. Now, whether some of y'all wanna, you know, uh, count that or not, that's totally up to you, that's fine. I counted them because they was present, they was there, okay? Why, why did this happen? Okay, so now, even though we're given some, some, some pre-clues and some pretexts as to why this happened, the whys, understand, will always be speculative, meaning I, I feel like it has the potential to be subjective. Okay, so there could be many whys, right? You could see a different why from your perspective and from your just your faith journey and your walk alone. You could see a different why than I. But so the why uh, that I found in the text was the number of believers were increasing. Jewish priests were being converted. None were able to stand against the wisdom and spirit that was on Stephen. And that's really, uh, I'm going to just put it in the video. Uh, that's the key one right there, right? None of them were able to stand against the wisdom and the spirit that was on Stephen. Okay. They didn't like the answer that he was given to the questions that they were asking. And so those are the main ones right there. Right, and this is, you can find this in chapter six, which is the chapter before, right? <clears throat> and it's six ten. it says, none of them was able to stand against the wisdom and spirit by which Stephen spoke. Okay, and if we go up before that it says, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power performed amazing miracles and signs among the people. Okay, but one day, some of the men from the synagogue of free slaves, as it was called, started a debate with him. None of them were able to stand against the wisdom, right? So it was like they were challenging the spirit that was on him. They were challenging the man and they couldn't stand against him. And so, okay, if we can't stand against you, what are we about to do? Oh, <laughs> we're about to lie on you, okay? And then how, essentially, essentially how was this situation brought about? With deception and with murder. Stephen was murdered, okay? I don't care if you want to call it stoned, I don't care what you call it, the guy was murdered, okay? For essentially no reason at all. And the focal point is you, the reader, and Stefan, the main character, okay? Okay, so how does this tie in to coincidences? Baby, because that was a part, <laughs> that was a part, I'm like, all right, Lord, show me some, cuz, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to follow, and he definitely uh, brought it in. Okay, so the first coincidence that he wanted me to point out in this, this particular scenario of scripture is shortly after the discontentment occurs due to the number of believers increasing, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit was chosen. Okay. Uh, yes. So I didn't, I didn't title this like I should have. Well, I didn't tell you the title I did. It's, we title in this lesson, The Accusation, right? Okay, and so the first co coincidence. So after a little bit of discontentment occurred, so to you, the reader, the focal point, the believer, do not think it's strange once you find yourself in the midst of a bunch of things happening and it seems a little chaotic it seems like there's always problems arising and more specifically, if we want to hone in further to the text, a specific problem. If you find yourself always surrounded by a particular problem uh, and he's real specific and it's not that this problem is ever present. It just seems to it just seems to find you some sort of way. OK, understand, understand that is a key element to your calling. That is a key element to what you are supposed to be doing, right? So think it not strange. It's not a coincidence that you just find yourself always associated with this problem. Not always, but like I said, you it, it seems to be ever present, right? It seems to be in your face kind of a lot more often than not, okay? Think it not strange. That is not a coincidence. And you need to get curious as to why you're always there, 
right? You need to start asking questions. Why is it that I'm always present when, when so-and-so happened? Or what, you know what I'm saying? Why am I always around when something like this sort of happens? You know, or why is it that people always come to me and ask me for answers to these questions? You know, I don't, I don't get curious, ask questions. It is key, it is key. It's a key element to your calling and your purpose and the things that you are supposed to be doing and carrying out here on this good earth, okay? Let's see, coincidence number two. The Jews started a debate with Stefan that they could not finish. They started a debate with Stefan because it didn't look right, it didn't sound right, so they persuaded a lie. Okay, that is also coincidence number two. And thinking not strange, okay? So thinking not strange, when you come as yourself, when you come as your most authentic self, right? You come as you are, as God asked you to be, right? And you're just truly existing in your own in your own element. <laughs> and people come, they start to they start to cause problems with you, right? They start to question things that you are doing. They start to criticize you, right? They start to criticize your looks, the way you talk, right? The way you sound, your actions you are taking, the routes that you are taking, because it doesn't look right to them. But I, and, and if you were present for Word of the World Breakdown, then I, <laughs> Holy Spirit made sure that I, I, I put as much emphasis on it as I could that Jesus was unusual in his time. Okay, so a lot of the things that people call strange, a lot of the things that people call crazy aren't necessarily crazy. They're just different. They're just different and it goes against the norm and because it goes against the grain and what everybody uh, considers to be, you know what I'm saying, the norm, uh, it's, people tend to get very dismissive with those kind of things. And if it's something that they can't explain, they wanna write it off as crazy, right? Or they wanna write it off as wrong. Okay, so think it not strange when you start to do the very things that God is asking you to do and because it's different and because it doesn't look the same like everybody else, people are starting, uh-oh, people are starting to talk about you. People are starting to lie on you. People, <laughs> oh man, the, the stories, the stories, they're the greatest, right? But you start to hear rumors about yourself and it's like, oh, okay, tell me more. I didn't even know I did that. <laughs> I didn't even know I said that, okay? But think it not strange. Those are not coincidences. This is more evidence to you that you are right where you are supposed to be, that you are doing the very things that you are supposed to be doing. And this is signs that the enemy cannot stand against you. So the enemy will find any tactic to work against you, okay? So that was, you know what I'm saying? Okay, see, so yes key little point right here. I said, we as Christians profess to live by and through Jesus Christ, ignoring the fact that nothing about Jesus in his time seemed right. Like I said, Jesus was unusual for his time. Okay. God be moving in some unusual ways. And we need to start opening our eyes to the possibilities that he's raising up things. He's raising up people. He's raising up entities like businesses, you know, personalities, etc., etc., prophets, you, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you want to put a name to it. He's raising up unusual in this season. It's not going to look like how it used to. It's not going to be the typical cookie cutter, traditional. Nah, God's not coming like that this way, <laughs> right? Because, and, and, and this is just my belief, but I mean, what other reason would he have, right? So if, if the traditional way hasn't been working, right? If y'all not listening to the traditional way, if y'all not listening to the traditional examples, what is it going to take to get your attention? Their attention. What is it going to take to prove that point? Right? Okay. Coincidence number C. I said number C. Lord have mercy. The third coincidence. The lies that were being told by the witnesses had to deal with Moses, blasphemy, and God. They were persuaded by teachers of religious law, so of course it makes the per so of course it makes perfect sense. It was ultimately the perfect lie. Okay, so be aware you are going to have people who are who are watching. You are going to have people who are going to watch your every move in this season, and they ain't gonna say nothing about it. Best believe you're gonna have some silent killers, okay, who are gonna be watching 
waiting for you to make a mistake, right? But in them waiting for you to make a mistake, they're going to be looking to try to poke holes at what you're doing, at the things you're saying, at the foundation that you are laying, because they don't want you to have a leg to stand on, right? This is, and again, this is a, a, a tactic of the enemy, because a lot of times people don't even know that they're being used by the enemy. And sometimes they do. And at that point, that's a Jezebel spirit and you need to run the other way. <laughs> You need to run the other way. And so the reason why this this it, it, it makes it the perfect lie was because of what it was dealing with. It was dealing with the law and religious leaders and all that. So it included everybody who we said was part of the who in the situation. So it included everybody, right? And it excluded the very thing that they all agreed upon. And that's where the issue came from. And that's what made it kind of a perfect lie, right? Okay, coincidence number D. Oh, okay, so let me go back real quick. So, 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 <laughs> hmm, okay, Holy Spirit, thank you. So a lot of you need to be ready, and this is your warning, right? And this, I don't, I don't want you guys, and he doesn't, he doesn't want you guys to take this warning as a negative, right? This is a positive. This is letting you know what's getting ready to occur in your life. So because... Because you have silent killers in your life, because you have uh, the adversary watching, right? They are going to try to come up with the perfect lies and the perfect deceptions, right? The accusations are getting ready to come up against you, okay? And it's going to seem, it's going to seem like it has weight, right? It's gonna be weighty and it's gonna cause some people to leave you. It's gonna cause some people to walk away from you. It's going to cause some people to question your character, right? And God is saying, allow it to happen in this season. Allow the falling away of individuals to happen. It is not a coincidence that these lies, that these accusations, that these stories are coming up against you and you are losing people. These people weren't for you to begin with, right? Because if they were truly for you when they truly loved you, they're going to come and talk to you first, right? They're going to come and have a conversation with you. Or they're going to dismiss it, right? Because they know you and they know your character. But in this season, God is saying, allow it to happen. The accusations are going to come. This is your warning right here. This is your, you know what I'm saying? So you can be ready. And if you're not ready, so you can prepare, get ready. Ask the Lord, what do I need to do? Get more in your word. Pray a little more. You know what I'm saying? This is that for you. Okay. Uh, coincidence D. Stefan's face began to glow. Then he proceeds to summarize their faith and belief system and his answer gives the entire rundown up until the current point basically so so this was right <clears throat> so this was right after uh the high priest they asked Stephen. they were like okay so are these accusations true right his face glue but uh glue is that's i don't okay his face just began to glow right and shortly after so it's shortly after he gave the rundown of their entire faith everything that they believed he gave it in his answer, like from beginning to end. He gave the calling of Abraham all the way down to Moses, you know what I'm saying, getting the people away from Egypt and all of that good stuff. He gave the rundown and then he pretty much turned it on them and said, you guys still do not believe. God's glory is getting ready to show upon you, right? But it's, and it's, uh, and I guess that's, that's kind of a coincidence or that's where the, like the irony comes into play is because God's glory came at the very moment Stephen was on trial, right? At, at, at the very moment that Stephen was being persecuted and being tried and being lied against and all of these things. And it seemed like the world was just against them. The world was just adding. This is when, this is when God's glory came and shone the most, right? It showed most vividly. It shone on his face and through the words that Stephen was saying. So in this hour... Get ready for God's glory to show upon you. Okay, that is what he is trying to say. Yes, in the hour of persecution. Yes, in the hour of accusations. Yes, yes, this very hour, this very minute, right? <laughs> Late in the midnight hour, you know, all of those things. Light shows best, shines brightest in the darkest, right? Right, okay. Uh, e. Stephen saw the glory of God right before he gave up his life. Right before Stephen lost his life, he saw the glory of God. And I feel like this is a lot of people's testimony. Uh, when it seems to be like when it seems that you are at your worst moments 
and you are trying to figure out this thing called life, right? And you are trying to walk it out. And it just, it just seems like you have tried everything that you have done, right? And you give it up. And it, 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 man, that is when God tends to show up in a lot of our lives is when we're done, when we're finally fed up of doing things our way, when we're ready to give up our will in our life, the way that we see it, the way that we think it should go, God's glory shows up, okay? So, and I know, in okay, okay, Holy Spirit. And I'm sensing that that is where a lot of skeptics come, right? That is where a lot of skeptics come with this belief and this walk, right? It's because, well, why does it take for me to be down at my lowest? Why does it take for me to be at my last? Why does it take for me almost losing my life for God to show up? Number one, honey, God has always been present, right? You just didn't have a need for him before, so you, you never saw him right? You never had a reason to call on his name. So you never called on his name, right? You were never curious to know him. You were never curious to know about him, right? So when things were going good, when things were going your way, it's like, need, need God for what? I have everything under control. I have everything under control, right? So it's not until, it's not until we realize our need for him that your eyes are opened to receive him, Okay, so so think it not. It's it's not that one's not a coincidence though. It could be. I can see how people consider it to be a coincidence, but it isn't, because it's only at that very moment that we open up ourselves up, <laughs> that we see the need for something greater, far beyond ourselves, and it's like His glory just shows. And that's I, it, it. You hear a lot of testimonies about God. You know what I'm saying changing people's lives, changing their minds, just saving them, being a saving grace right in that moment. And that, that'd be some of the reasons why you have no need for him. You didn't need him before now. So don't put that on him. That is definitely a you thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. F. Stefan's accusers couldn't kill him in the same place that they accused him. He had to be uprooted from where he was in order to be killed. Y'all. So that's good. So they couldn't stone him, right? where he answered the question. So they had to drag him out of the town, my God. And so that is who, <laughs> that is very prophetic for a lot of you. The very spaces and the very places that your accusers are getting ready to occupy and surround you. And it seems like your back is gonna be against the wall. They will not be able to kill you there. They will have to uproot you, right? Meaning they will have to try to mess with your mind, uproot your belief system, right? Uproot your ambition, uproot your faith. <laughs> Uproot you from your friends, right? Uproot you from the very things that are keeping you grounded. Otherwise, they will not be able to stand against you. So it's, 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 it's on you, right? It's on you and your fight because this is your warning right here. God is sending some instruction, some warning, some things to heed to, to pay attention to that is coming to you in this next season. They will not be able to kill you. They will not be able to stand against you in the very place that they are accusing you. It's not going to work. Their words alone are not going to work. Their stories alone are not going to work unless you allow it to. Unless you allow it to mess with your mind, unless you allow it to defeat you. And then at that point, they get you out your hookup, right? Now, all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? You've been doing good for so long, right? You're not cussing nobody out, right? You're keeping it peaceful. You're minding your business, right? Now, all of a sudden, these things start happening. These things start happening. You start to hear these things, and now all of a sudden, you're out your hookup. You're back to cussing people out, right? You're back to not caring what you say, when you say, how you say it. OK, and now you're just saying anything. Try to defend yourself. God don't need you to defend yourself in this hour. God is not asking you to defend yourself in this hour. OK, he's just asking you to be aware and know that these things are coming. Be aware and know that these things are coming, but they will not be able to stand up against you in this season. Wherever they accuse you, they will not be able to kill you there. They have no authority there. That's why the attacks are coming. Because they see that you are no longer swayed. They see that you are no longer bothered. They see, oh my God, they see that a lot of the things that used to hurt you don't hurt you anymore. <laughs> they see your newfound strength. They see it even if you don't. Even if you don't. Which is why the accusations are coming. Which, are, which is why the attacks are coming. Okay. Know that it, as long as you're grounded... They can't stand against you. But the minute that they uproot you, the minute they get you out to hook up, then it becomes an issue. More of an issue, should I say. 
Okay. Let's see. Let's say this next note says, you couldn't believe what was coming out of my mouth. You couldn't believe what was being shown by my life. You couldn't believe the physical reality. So you decided to kill me instead. And this is what a lot of your enemies are doing in the season, right? They can't believe the things that are being shown in your life. They cannot believe. They cannot believe that it's you that these things are happening to. That it's you that are receiving these blessings. That is you that is receiving this promotion. That is you that is receiving this husband, this wife that you've been praying for. My God, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Ooh, one second. Jesus. <laughs> In three days, a promotion is coming to you. God said, do not tell your cousin. God said, do not tell your uncle. He said, keep this one to yourself. Don't ask for any advice because the advice that you are going to receive is going to kill the seed for your future. Okay, so I don't know who you are. God said, seek no advice. Don't talk to that cousin and don't talk to your uncle. Keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. <laughs> you can't contain me, so you decide to kill me instead. My showing up was making you that uncomfortable that you had to devise a plan to get rid of me. Stefan did nothing spectacular. There is nothing spectacular about us. There is nothing spectacular about you. Right? We're just ordinary people who decided to show up as our most authentic selves, as God has called us to be. And yet, that is making you uncomfortable, so uncomfortable. That's making your enemies so uncomfortable that they have no other op or, or option or they see no other option but to kill you. Right? They see no other option but to come against you. They can't contain you. They can't stop it. They can't stop it. So they got to kill it. I got to end it. I got to end it because this can't succeed. Right. And again, that just goes back to being tactics of the enemy. My God. My God. No, God is asking some of you to remove yourselves from the accusation before you allow it to kill you. Don't wait for the word of the lie to be made manifest. God said, leave and leave now. So the fact that some of you are being warned at this very moment that the accusations are coming, God said, remove yourself before you allow, uh, uh, before you allow it to kill you, because it's going to it's going to come from some of the people you very least expect it to come from. The people that you are expecting to stand by your sides in times like this is going to be the very ones that are going to try to kill you. They're going to be the very ones that try to stop this next level from happening in your life. And God said, because you know now, remove yourself. As soon as you hear inklings of it, as soon as it makes its way back to you, don't try to fight it. Don't try to defend yourself. Simply remove yourself from the equation. Because now the tactics of the enemy will return to sender. They have to, because they have no target to hit at this point. Okay. H, Saul was present at the persecution. Mm -mm. And this one, Lord have mercy. This was the one that really blew me because I, I, I didn't pay attention to this before. I never noticed it up until this point, okay? The same Saul, the same Saul that went around persecuting and killing all these Christians, woo, woo. And it is right before, so this is right before Saul has that Saul to Paul conversion, right? Uh, where, where Saul was on his road, on the road to Damascus, right? You know what I'm saying? And he went blind, okay? Just tr travel back travel back a few passages and we're here. We're here at the very killing of Stephen and Saul was there. Saul was there. And, and after this little moment, Saul went berserk, okay? Saul went berserk, persecuting and killing all of the followers of the way, as many as he could find, women, children, it didn't matter. It did not matter. And I thought that that was uh, wild, okay? I don't think that that was a coincidence that one of the most notorious killers of the way, the most <laughs> notorious killer of the followers of Jesus Christ was present at this very moment. He was there as the accusations were being brought against him. He was there. He was present for Stephen's answer and he was there at the stoning of Stephen. <laughs> that was no coincidence. That was not a coincidence. And so God is telling you 
that one of your biggest accusers, okay, one of your biggest enemies will be present. And like I said, and like I said earlier, <laughs> be expectant because now you know, right? Now you know. And I know sometimes a lot of this is more easier to hear than it is to put into practice. Uh, sit with it, pray about it. But one of your biggest haters, okay, one of your biggest killers, one of your biggest threats, your biggest enemy in the season, they're going to be present for all of this, right? They're going to be present for all of this. And God is saying, you're not going to know who it is. You're not going to know. And like I said, because, because God is asking you guys to remove yourself from the ac accusations as soon as you start to hear it, it's going to come from someone you least expected, but this person has always been around. This will be, this will be a person who you have confided in and trusted in for so long, right? You have thought this person to be a safe haven. And the minute, the minute that these accusations, these lies and whatever deceit is coming up against you in this season, the minute that it starts to make itself manifest, the minute that it starts to make itself known, this accuser is going to run with it. This accuser is going to run with it. I mean, they're going to take off, take off, take off. The same way that Saul was persecuting followers of the way is the same way that this accuser is about to stir up the pot, baby. They're going to make it hot, hot. They're going to run with it. And this is going to be somebody you expected to come and talk to you about it first, and they're not going to. They're not going to. Because the truth is they were never for you to begin with. They were never for you to begin with. And God said all of this... All of this occurring at, at, at one time is not a coincidence. This is God working in the midst, okay? This is God fighting for you, okay? Be weary and mindful of individuals who will be present for something and just take off with it, who would just run with it, okay? Be mindful. Be mindful of people you have around you who are just watching in this season, right? They're not necessarily saying too much. They're not trying to... Uh, they're not trying to watch the quiet ones. And that's just the best way that I can put it. Watch the quiet ones. Watch how they react when you tell them something good. Watch how they react when you tell them something real personal, you know, weighty or whatever. Watch. God is asking you and telling you to heed and pay attention to people's behaviors in this season. Okay. Okay. And the tie-in, okay, the tie-in, how it, you know, word from prophet and the Lord speaking directly to man. So by, by, because Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit in this moment, by definition, right? By definition, Stephen was holding the office of a prophet for this brief moment, however long this moment occurred, right? He, him speaking, right? Once the glory has shown on his face, et cetera, et cetera. He was holding the office of a prophet for that moment, right? So that is a word from prophet coming out of his mouth. And he was answering the crowds. He was answering the accusers. He was answering the lying witnesses, right? And that is God speaking directly to man. Okay, that's the tie-in. Okay. Yeah. And know that there's about to be a crowd. Okay. So the crowd, the lying witnesses, the, the pot is getting ready to be stirred in your life. And there are going to be crowds, many people, all of that good stuff, okay? And God's just telling you to pay attention in this season. This is your warning right here, to get ready. So you ain't got to get ready, be ready. Okay, and that wraps up the accusation for today. That wraps up our study or our little, our little, you know what I'm saying, breakdown of Acts 7, you know? And I hope that you got something out of it. I hope that it fed your spirit. And you got what you came for. You got what you came to receive, y'all. So next week, uh, the reading material, reading material, Philippians chapter 2 through Acts 13, okay? And then the point of study. So the, the, discuss, the discussion scripture that we're going to be talking about is Acts 8 verses 26 through 40. That is the point of study. That is what we're going to be discussing next week in this session. Okay, and then the spiritual nuggets for next week. Also, you know, daily scriptures, you know, Ephesians chapter four, verses 28 through 29, Ephesians 4, 31 through 32, Ephesians 5, 17, 
Ephesians 5, 25 through 30, Ephesians 6, 13 through 18, 2 Corinthians 6, 10. All right. So those are the spiritual nuggets. Y'all make sure y'all on the lookout for, for a sidebar Wednesday and Friday as well. And the remaining statement I'm going to leave you with is more than a statement. It's a chapter. <laughs> but like I said, I just be letting the Lord do what he's going to do. And the remaining statement for this week is Luke 15. All right, Luke 15. Um, I pray you all have a good evening. Enjoy the rest of your night. I love you all. Be safe. I'll be seeing you soon. I can't wait to see you soon. Y'all have a good one. I'll see y'all next week. <laughs>
what each of you guys were personally looking for. That'll bring me joy. And I just like to see, you know, the revelations that y'all got. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can help me out. But so we is picking up from Acts uh, chapter 14. Ain't had no ending count, so y'all know. And then the Romans beginning count. Ain't had one for y'all because I don't got my good book. But the first note that I have is from Romans chapter 4 verse 15. Highlighted this scripture. Highlighted this scripture because the very last sentence made sense as to why we have a bunch of lawlessness when it comes to personal boundaries and respect. It says, and where there is no law, there is no trans. My question to you then becomes how would someone know they're being disrespectful or coming close to your boundaries being crossed when a lot of the times we never have these types of conversations. Most of the time we become cool with someone through mutual sharing, whether it be an idea, food or activity. So when we be having disagreements, a lot of times it be misunderstandings from unsaid expectations that we believe to be readily understood by the next person. And that is not always the case. More often times it isn't the case. OK, so a lot of times we just be walking around with these unsaid expectations uh, with these relationships that we built based on something, you know, based on one thing that we like. Like I said in the previous comment, whether it be food or drink or activity or something, you know what I'm saying? You get cool with somebody based on that one activity. And then we be walking around expecting these people to just get it, to just know it. Uh, because we linked on that one activity. And because we linked on that one activity, we thinking that it's across the board. Yeah, nah, nah, don't quite work like that. Sometimes I wish it did, but it don't. <laughs> Okay, and then for the next note, we got Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 8. Okay, so we're going to see. Okay, 4 through 8. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Okay. Now, the reason why I read that scripture is because it pretty much said what I wanted to highlight in that verse is that we all one body. And because we all different and uniquely made, we all have different gifts that are uh, con contributing factors and are important to the whole body of Christ. You know what I'm saying? So like it was saying, if you encourage, like if you feel like your gift is to encourage people and you know that's sh that's what you was put here on this earth to do, man, you better encourage to the 10th power do you get what i'm saying if you know you here and you supposed to show hospitality like that is what you do you feed people you love on people you know what i'm saying you care about their souls you know what i'm saying do that to the 10th power do it unto excellence everything that you do everybody is not gonna have the same gifting everybody ain't supposed to have the, the same gifting that's like you know what i'm saying having this whole body and because you favor your eyes or, you know what I'm saying? Your smile, you know what I'm saying? You like your smile cause it's all cheese and stuff. And it's like one of the best features of you. You want your whole body to be the smile. It don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? And so we all have to take the time and just learn how to encourage and embrace each other and get us really going in our gifts, like a hundred percent, 110% going hard in that gift and doing the things that, you know what I'm saying? We supposed to be doing cause it's all needed. It's all needed prophecy um teaching leadership giving you know it's all needed they're all gifts they're all gifts everybody possesses a gift and you maybe just ain't unwrapped yours yet and that's okay but get with somebody who can help you find it because you got one you got one you special you special you matter look at this camera look at this camera yeah i'm talking to you you matter you are loved you are wanted you are desired and you matter here, okay? It's just about you getting around the people who can bring that up out of you so you can bring it up out of yourself. Get what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, all right. Just as long as, you know what I'm saying, you're getting what I'm laying down, we cool. And then I got a side note. I feel like I'm reading a farewell letter to us, to the church, sort of like 
a keep this in mind kind of thing. So that's how I was feeling when I was reading the book of Romans. I was just like, ah, oh. like as I was getting to the end of it and it was close and I was feeling like I was reading a farewell letter. Like, oh, okay. Like it kind of made me sad a little bit. And like, oh, you know, oh, I'm, I'm going to see you. Thank you for having me keep this stuff in mind. That's how I was feeling. <laughs> And then the Romans ending count, of course, drop it in the comment section below. Give us your Romans ending count. Okay. And then uh, first Corinthians beginning count. I don't have none. So again, you know, just what's some of the things that you guys are looking for? What are some of the things that you guys are looking for? And then the question that I have in here is what have you guys previously looked for um, before taking this journey? What was it that you were reading the Bible for? What were you trying to get out of it? What were your intentions on reading the good book? What was it that you wanted to take away aside from what you're doing now? Because, you know, we know what we kind of have an idea what you're looking for now. But so before you even took upon this course, what was you what was you looking for? What was you looking to gain? So that's that's what we want to know. No notes for the book of Corinthians. And so give us your first Corinthians ending count in the comment section below. Second, second Corinthians beginning count. We don't have one and I have no notes for the book of second Corinthians either. So share your second Corinthians ending count in the comment section below. The book of Galatians beginning count. Of course, we don't have one, but I do have some notes. Um, and so the first note that we have is Galatians chapter four, verses one through two. These scriptures make so much sense. I understand more now about waiting on the promise than I have in the past. Definitely read because definitely read because as a parent, you wouldn't hand oh I, I meant to say read, y'all meant to say read. Like you know how that read that, that's what I was going for. It ain't make no sense me reading it back to it. <laughs> definitely read because as a parent, you wouldn't hand your child millions before they were ready for it. You would have to make sure that they could handle it. And I know some of y'all probably thinking what can you handle? What can't you handle? Like, why aren't you ready for the promises now? And in the blink of an eye, you are tripping over the little petty stuff. Granted, no problem is ever small, nor does it feel like it in the moment. But when you compare it to the promises of God and the life you see yourself living or dream of, how big really is the things you're dealing with? I'm choosing to focus on the negative here because that's what we as as a people in general, choose to focus on or hyper focus. We we tend to put all of our cares, all of our focus on the negative things that are taking place in our life uh, most times. And if there is no good without bad, then why choose to continuously put up with the bad to do the same things over and over, to have the same things over and over, to repeat the same things over and over? You don't enjoy practice. You work hard at it to look good at the game. You know what I'm saying? You don't enjoy the pain after or even during the workout. You hurt so your body looks good in that dress or suit that you've had hanging in that closet just for that for that one party all year round. You've been waiting for it. You don't study for the hell of it. You study so you can pass the test. And if the life you're and if the life you're living right now isn't the life God promised you or isn't the life you see yourself living, then why do you keep treating it like it is? Why do you hold it like it is so fragile? And why are you so careful not to rock the boat about it? You are keeping yourself stuck. You are choosing to repeat the cycles. It's you. Say it. Say it. It's me. Say it. it's me. It's me. After this session today, take inventory of the past week in your life and ask yourself, what has remained the same because of you? What has remained the same because you chose not to speak up or you chose to ignore it or you chose to do the same routine? Then ask yourself, how many times do you do that one specific behavior that gets on your nerves? Okay, then ask, then ask yourself, why do you do it? And really give yourself an answer. And I mean, really answer yourself, like grace yourself with three to five minutes to think about your answer and then say it out loud audibly to yourself. Okay, that's what I want y'all to do. Ask them questions. And in case that was like a little confusing, because I know that was a lot I said after this session today, so right after you get done watching this episode, this is what I want you to do. Get out a piece of paper and we're about to take inventory of your life, okay? And just this past week, you know, we ain't gonna do the whole span of the whole life. That's a long time, okay? But so get a piece of paper out and ask yourself, what has remained the same because of you? So that's question number one. 
this past week, what has remained the same because of you? Second question, what has remained the same because you chose not to speak up? That's question number two. Question number three, what has remained the same because you chose to ignore it or you chose to do the same routine about it? So those are three questions, right? Okay, and then the fourth, fourth and final question. Then ask yourself, how many times do you do that one specific behavior that gets on your nerves? Okay, I lied. That's question number four, but we got one after that. Well, technically it's, it's four, but the the fourth question has two parts. So you're, you're pointing out this one specific behavior that you do, that you know that you do consciously and unconsciously sometimes, and it bothers you. I mean, it bugs the hell out of you. What is this one uh, specific behavior that you do, right? So you're pointing it out. And then the second part to question number four is ask yourself, why do you do it? And before you answer the why, don't just be quick to don't do the knee jerk reaction. Don't give. Well, you can. You can. So you can compare and contrast the answers that you give. So if you want to go for it and go ahead and write down the, the initial reaction, the initial gut answer that you have. And then after that, grace yourself three to five minutes of thinking time. Sit back, really simmer with the question and then answer the question on the piece of paper. And then I want you to just read the read the piece of paper, review it and go over it with yourself. And then you will know how to base the personal conversation you need to have with yourself uh, on your answers and how you review it and how you feel about it and how you move and go accordingly about it. But when you write the answer, make sure you say it out loud audibly to yourself. Okay, because sometimes we be thinking stuff and we think that it registers to us and we'll forget it like the next day, even a couple of hours, even because it's just up here in the mind. Okay, so we need it. We need like it to register another way. So that's why I want you guys to audibly answer yourself. Okay. And then we got Galatians ending count. I ain't got one for y'all. So make sure y'all provide it in the comment section below. And then for the book of Ephesians, we don't have no beginning count there. Uh-oh. Give me one second, y'all. All right, yeah, and yeah, that's all we have for this week. We are picking up next week from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. That's where we will be picking up from next week. So make sure y'all get y'all reading in. That means your 50 minutes start tomorrow. But all right, then, I holla. I see y'all next week. Peace.